So, folks, uh, Tokyo Pop has returned from the dead. Yay! Yay! During Tokyo Pop's panel at Anime Expo, a representative said that the company plans to license manga in 2016. Nice. They're also looking into art books, collector's editions, light novels, and even film and TV production. Wow. Tokyo Pop owns about 20 properties that they uh, could license for film or TV adaptions. The company is also planning a smartphone app, which will let users upload their own comics. Mm. Tokyo Pop was a major North American licensor of manga, uh, but stopped publishing around uh, 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, they've uh, since worked with Right Stuff and Comixology to finish releasing the manga they'd licensed. Nice. Uh, right Stuff um, uh, also announced, speaking of Right Stuff, uh, several major upcoming releases. Uh, this is a call, a coming from Anime Expo, of course. The original Mobile Suit Gundam TV series Say it ain't so. will be released on DVD and Blu-ray starting this fall. Ooh. This will be the first ever Blu-ray release of Mobile Suit Gundam in North America. Yay! Nice. The first 21 episodes of the show, which is roughly the first half of the series, will ship with English and Japanese audio, English si subtitles, and on-screen translations. This means we may be getting a new dub which would be quite interesting. Right Stuff also announced they're actively working on releases of the next three Gundam series after Mobile Suit, Zeta Gundam, Double Zeta Gundam, and Victory Gundam, as well as After War Gundam X and the two Turn A Gundam movies. Uh, no news on when those will appear, unfortunately. Uh, they said in the coming months, which means the future. <clears throat> Once all those series are released, um, all the major Gundam TV series, OVAs, and movies will have been released on disc in North America. There are still a number of smaller OVA projects that have not been released, like Gundam MS Igloo and Gunpla Builders Beginning G, but that's sort of smaller fry. Now, besides Gundam, Right Stuff also announced they'll release all 39 episodes of the Revolutionary Girl Utena TV series on Blu-ray in 2016. Um, this will be the third North American release of the show, so people <laughs> like this show, um, and the first on Blu-ray. Utena is one of the first TV shows to deconstruct the magical girl genre. So it's a very mm -hmm. important show. Uh, it also pioneered this surreal visual style that has since followed forward into shows like Puella Magi Madoka Magica, the Monogatari series, uh, a lot of other you know, well-known series. That weird visual style goes all the way back to Utna in the 90s. I was wondering about that. Yeah. Well, let's see. Digital Manga Publishing, mm -hmm. uh, platform for digital and print publications of manga in English, announced a change in its system. Mm -hmm. Localizers will now get paid up front instead of getting royalties. Interesting. Uh, this may or may not... Uh, make localizers more money. Uh, digital manga publishing basically lets anyone translate, edit, and or letter manga, mm -hmm. even if they have no experience in publishing, hmm. um, with checks and balances in place to ensure quality. Gotcha. Uh, thanks to this system, the company has published hundreds of manga, wow. including Antique Bakery, Elemental Galade, Galade? Uh, Galad, Galad uh, Hentai Prince, and Stony Cat, mm -hmm. The Ring, Unico, Trigun, Vamp and Vampire D, uh, though many of their releases are adults. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, to answer a question from the, the chat room, Liquidus, um, I believe this is the first time Right Stuff has released on Blu-ray. That, that may well be true. Um, part of the reason for that is that Right Stuff is working directly with Sunrise and Bandai back in Japan on those releases, so they have access to nicer masters and such. Um, I should also point out while we're talking about that, um, the original Mobile Suit Gundam's video quality is not awesome. Hmm. Um, so while the Blu-ray release will be nice, don't worry too much about it, gonna, it, about it looking fabulous and fantastic on Blu-ray versus DVD. It will certainly be a nicer transfer, but it's not going to be like The Godfather. So no, no cleanup, super cleanup? No, no I, I know that there was a remaster of it recently in Japan, more of a cleanup than anything else. Um, uh, so it is going to look good, but it is 70s animation. There's only so much you can do with that. Uh, Studio 4C and video game company Comcept, that's with an M, launched a joint product recently, a project recently, to crowdfund a video game and an anime film. The video game is called Red Ash, The Indelible Legend. It'll be led by Keiji Inafune of the Mega Man franchise uh, and other members of, the, of, of that Mega Man franchise, particularly Mega Man Legends. 
Uh, although Inafune was quick to point out this is not a Mega Man game. It's not a Mega mm. Man thing because it's, it's owned by other people. Something different. Yeah. Uh, so the anime film, though, Red Ash, it could be Med, uh, Red Ash Magikiata or Magikata. I've seen different spellings in different news releases, so I don't know exactly how it's spelled. Uh, something like Red Ash Magikiata. Uh, it's being crowdfunded in an interesting way. The initial goal is $150,000 $150, for the first five minutes of the story. And then each stretch goal, so as they get more money off that, that'll unlock another minute of the film. Hmm. So more money gets pledged, more of the movie gets made. That's a very interesting way of doing that. It really is. It so, kind of reminds me of uh, St uh, Stephen King's release of, 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 mm, of his novel in increments right. based on payment. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's yeah, kind of the idea. So we may end up with a... 17 minute film or who knows hmm. uh yuta sano of berserk the golden age arc 3 will direct the film both video game and film follow treasure hunters in a world where robots hunt humans hmm. so it looks like a, a sky and it's not too and it, it's not too horribly like dystopian but it, it's kind of a steampunky type thing Studio 4C also launched its own crowdfunding platform website on its own website for the film, hmm. which is kind of a lot to do. That's, yeah. Uh, that's... Uh, besides Red Ash, the site includes coming soon pages for an art book and, get this, a project to crowdfund improvements to their crowdfunding site. Wow, that's that's almost like feedback on feedback. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> crowdfunding exception. Ah! <laughs> so very interesting. Well, uh, in other areas, Funimation is issued, issued, they issued, they issued a statement about its trademarks this week. Mm. Uh, it's more of a reminder how trademark law works. Basically, Funimation owns the rights to various characters and can legally shut down any fan use of their work, including fan art. Mm -hmm. Whoa! Yeah. However, they didn't do that because the law states that copyright infringements don't change rights. No matter how many people make fan art of Sailor Moon, rights to those characters remain unchanged. Mm -hmm. However, U.S. courts have ruled that if a company knows that its trademarks are being used and the company doesn't actively try to combat that, then the company can lose its trademark. So if I reuse the Funimation logo and Funimation finds out but lets it go, then that trademark can eventually be ruled as public mark. Yeah. So... Basically, if something's trademarked to Funimation, don't reuse it. Don't slap it on your own products. Don't make a parody of it, you know, directly. Um, Unless you get away with it. <laughs> no, don't. Just don't. <laughs> don't. It's a bad idea um, because uh, lawyers will. Lawyers are expensive, and it's not fun. Yeah, no, no. Um, <laughs> and, and again, this is a Funimation just basically saying, "Here's a review of how all this works." You know, we don't want to jump on anyone, but if you use a trademark specifically, that's a different thing. Hmm. And they have to be more careful about that. Meanwhile, a popular 1990s franchise is coming back. My jaw dropped when I saw this. AIC announced they've acquired the right to the Saber Marionette franchise. Yeah! And will be launching a new reanime project for that. No news yet on what exact form that'll take. Uh, the most recent series in the franchise, Saber Marionette J to X, which I remember because the trailers had uh, girls going, Saber Marionette, J to X, uh, <laughs> premiered back in 1998 and was the culmination of two OVAs, two TV series, and two manga, all released in the late 90s. So mm. within like three years of each other, uh, plus other spinoffs and such. Uh, it's set in a universe without women, uh, only female like androids that have like no personality. But the protagonist stumbles on a couple of androids with emotion chips. Ooh. So suddenly he has a bunch of emotionful girls around him. I wonder when exactly. the chips are down. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let us move on What's to... Coming up in convention world. Exactly. The conventions of the... Uh, of, of, of this weekend, basically. Conventions this Starting weekend. Starting off with... Comic-Con International, San Diego. San Diego Comic-Con. July 9th through 12th at the San Diego Convention Center in San Diego, California. I don't think we need to tell you anything about that. That I mean, pretty much stands on its own pretty there. Pretty big one. What, what about the next one? Uh, Connecticon is mm. at the Connecticut Convention Center uh, slash the Hartford Marriott downtown and the, Hiltford, uh, the Hilton Hartford. So three um, hotels 
all coming together for this in Hartford, Connecticut. It's been running since 2003, so over 10 years. They expect 12,000 people. Who's going to be there? Wow. Um, Chris Bevins, uh, voice actor, director, and line producer at Funimation. Matt McElroy of Drive Through Comics. Uh, and Nichelle Nichols and George Takei, which is... Whoa. Yeah. So a bit of Star Trek stuff Star there going. Trek. As well as others. Yes, George Takei. <laughs> oh, my. Well, check out this one, Anime Blues Con. It's a neat name. July 10th through 12th mm -hmm. in Memphis Cook Convention Center nice. in Memphis, Tennessee. Cool. It's in its fifth year. Mm -hmm. Its guests will include uh, Gary Chalk, Vic Magnolia. <laughs> Vic Mag 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 Magnolia. <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist is going to be there. <laughs> Rena Palencia. Oh, she's Ooh. so sweet. Mm. And uh, check it out. Nice. If you're in Wichita, Kansas, Anime Festival Wichita will be held this weekend, the 10th through the 12th, at the Hyatt Regency Wichita. Uh, it's been going since 2005, so about 10 years old now. Good for you. Wow. Ikatsukan. Mm. Uh, that's going to be uh, this uh, same same July 10th through 12th at Wa Grand Wayne Convention Center in Fort Wayne. Is that Indiana? I think so, yep. And that's been going on since 2003. So mm -hmm. uh, the events are going to include Gunpla Builders Showcase. Cool. So, yeah. Interest mm. for, for those of us who uh, have checked out uh, <laughs> uh, Open Gundam style. Oop. Up, 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 open Gundam style. So, uh, Pokemon and Hearthstone tournament, and also Artemis. Yes, do you know what Artemis is? Tell me, what is Artemis? Artemis? So, Artemis is that was a... my friend in school. <laughs> she was sweet. Um, Artemis is the Star Trek um, bridge combat simulator. Ooh. So, you set up a bunch of laptops, and one is engineering, one is weapons, one is ah. navigation, one's the captain, um, and each one has specific things coming in. And there's one big screen which shows, you know, the ship and all the other things around. The command and control yeah. center. Yeah, and it's it, it's just far enough away from Star Trek's trademarks uh, <laughs> and and stuff that you know you can, you can kind of get away with doing the same kind of stuff. So there's still. So can you have Klingons on the starboard bow? Sadly, no. But oh. you can have you know Sirons, Sirons, uh, whatever on the starboard bow. <laughs> Klingons. Um, yes. <laughs> and it's a lot of fun. It, um, it, it's designed for I think 15 to 20 minute uh, uh, conflicts, and you just kind of go out there and shoot things down. That it's, sounds like fun. It, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, if you're in Buffalo, New York this weekend, check out RyuCon at the Buffalo Niagara Convention Center. It's in its fourth year. Guests include Tiffany Grant, voice actor and writer, and Kirk Thornton, voice actor. Knoxville. Knoxville Anime Day. An interesting one. July 10th. No, it's like July 11th in Holiday Inn, Knoxville West at Cedar Buff. Mm -hmm. Bluff. 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 I'm not bluffing. <laughs> it will be there at Knoxville, Tennessee. The dealer's room focused event with uh, 3,000 square feet of dealers, uh, though uh, it also includes a few uh, uh, fan panels, a uh, video game room, a costume contest, and it's only five bucks to get in. Who, who could beat that? Yeah, exactly. Five bucks. What a brilliant setup. So this is a really interesting thing I found out this week. So they do this anime day at different cities, uh, like I think one a month. And so they kind of go around from city to city. It's one day. And it's focused on a dealer's room. Oh. The idea they just bring in folks, they set up a big dealer's room, and they say, okay, you know, there's going to be a room with fan panels and a room with video games and so forth. But the whole idea here is it's one day, you can come in, you can buy your anime and get out. And at five bucks, that's awesome. Exactly. I mean, if it comes to my town, then I don't have to go to the con. This yeah. is a brilliant idea because so many people may not be close to a con, but if they come to town, sure, and it's only five bucks. Totally. I want to make sure I'm not working that day. <laughs> <laughs> Great idea. Um, for our international fans, check out MondoCon, July 11th, Saturday, at the Hung Expo in Budapest, Hungary. Sadly, their site um, is not only not in English, even translated, they aren't really listing guests and events in much detail. So I don't know much about what's going on there. But if you're in Hungary, check out MondoCon. My Viking blood loves Ooh. the name of this next, this next uh, uh, con. It's called Valhalla Con. Yes. Uh, surprisingly, it's 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 not Norway. It's actually in uh, Colombia, yeah. uh, uh, South Carolina, ah, sure. and that's going to be July 11th through 12th mm -hmm. at the Columbia Metropolitan Convention Center. Okay. It's the third year, and it's only 20 bucks to get in. Not bad at all. I, I can live with that. All right, what's going on in the world of Kickstarters? Update on the essential. Otaku Guide to Tokyo. Mm. This Kickstarter fund will uh, uh, will fund a digital physical guidebook mm. to otaku sites in Tokyo, cool. which 
uh, if you ever get a chance to go <laughs> is fantastic and having a guidebook uh, is essential because yeah. Tokyo is like a circuit board mm -hmm. for something that you've never seen before. Yeah. Uh, it's just amazing. And mm -hmm. having some someone to help you make the most of your time there yeah. would be well worth it. Yeah. They've raised uh, $1,200 out of the 4000 that they need with 15 days to go. So check that out on yeah. Kickstarter. Yeah, that makes it a, a, a little more iffy as to whether they're fun or not. So they definitely need your money. Hmm. Uh, my own Otaku Brain Trust anime convention Kickstarter is sadly stalled at $315 of the $5,300 needed to fund my intellectually focused anime convention in Virginia for February of next year. We have eight days to go. So if you want a panel focused convention filled with smart people, uh, head over to Kickstarter and look for Otaku Brain Trusts. Let's see. Fred. Fennell. Mm -hmm. We've been oh, talking Melbourne. about him a lot. Yes. 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 Uh, the Australian guy mm -hmm. uh, still has no backers Aww. for his $78. And that's not that that's the whole Kickstarter. $78 <laughs> US uh, to uh, fund his anime watching uh, yeah. binge. He's never watched anime before. And this fund will go to uh, energy drinks so that he can watch 10 anime series nonstop over a 48 hour period. Mm -hmm. There's five days left to go. Come on, guys. Somebody ought to, ought to, ought to jump on that yeah. and say, okay, um, 78 bucks. <laughs> this guy's got to watch all this anime. <laughs> okay, we want you to watch this series, this series, and this series and report on them. <laughs> totally, totally. Um, hmm. Check him out. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, the Asterion, French-Japanese interactive anime series we've been talking about. Uh, this is where uh, each episode will contain decision points. You can change the Choose your own story. adventure. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Interactive. Um, it's now only $19,000 out of the $151,000 they need by the end of July. So mm, hmm. uh, staff, members, staff members include a Studio Ghibli alumnus. Oh. Yeah, and several other distinguished anime staff, including Hiroshi Shimizu, uh, Michiko and Hachin, and the Lupin the Third Fujiko Mine series. Um, head over to, just look for Asterion, A-S-T-E-R-I-O-N. If nothing else, check out the video they've got posted. The animation looks gorgeous, very high budget. Um, you know, that's pretty cool. So definitely, definitely an impressive project. Finally, some good news. <laughs> the Otaku No Video Kickstarter ended successfully. $102,000 to bring Otaku No Video on Blu-ray mm. to everywhere outside of Japan. Awesome. Yes. Yes. And they will be offering, I, I, I should note, I forgot to put this in here, um, they will be offering that even to folks who didn't back the Kickstarter. Um, oh, thank you. Yes. So it, it will be out there. It'll probably be more expensive than the Kickstarter, though. Uh, in the chat room, uh, Liquidus uh, pointed out uh, earlier news story, um, the Red Ash video game is planning to be sort of a spiritual sequel to Mega Man Legends. Um, so it's kind of bringing in, apparently, many of the ideas they had for that. Ooh. So, again, not a Mega Man game because it's not officially made mm -hmm. by Capcom, but it will be kind of you know on that, um, uh, um, in there, if you will. Mm. It does sound like a think tank a little bit. <laughs> That's exactly. because it's, it's, it's oriented uh, on more of an, I, 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 I would, more of a mm. intellectual, intellectual approach rather yeah. than uh, merely uh, fandom. Yeah. So then very briefly, the, the idea is that I wanted to bring together all of those panels that think deeply about a topic, that kind of go deeper about a topic. <laughs> um, Although uh, the idea of lobbying for otaku-friendly policies I I do that. is great. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that, Steve. Uh, I think so, we should do that. So, somebody recently refurbished a theater. Uh, mm. I was reading on one of the AP news presses, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a wire, wire feeds, that mm. uh, they've refurbished a theater somewhere in Texas, and they're planning on showing anime to uh, uh, wow. help support the theater nice. now that they've refurbished it. I, I want to say it was in Houston, but I can't Probably. remember off the top yeah. of my head. Well, I think Funimation's in Houston somewhere. Mm. I, I think uh, they're... I, I know they have some some something in um, uh, 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 Two Flower, or uh, mm. was it Mount Flower Mount? Uh, Flower yeah. Mount, I think, okay. uh, in Dulles. 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 Oh, Dulles. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we have a Dulles. Dulles we have a Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving on to the... 
anime releases what? of the week. What's come out this week? What's come out this week? So starting with 4K Media slash Ten of Dimes release of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Season 2. All 52 episodes on um, DVD for $59.99. That's dub only, of course. Um, $59.99. You'll get about 10 bucks cheaper online. Wow. Funimation. Noragami Season 1 Collection mm -hmm. on Blu-ray and DVD combo. Mm -hmm. 12 episodes for $46. And I believe that's not cents. correct. No? I believe oh. that's $64.98. Ah, darn this yeah. dyslexia. <laughs> sorry, guys. I tried to get you the discount. <laughs> yeah. Just couldn't mark it in there. Sorry. But there's also a combination with a limited edition, mm. and that's $69.98. Yeah. Five bucks more. Not bad. Yeah. And not only that, there's the... Now, how's this next one different? Uh, it's the Funimation Shop exclusive. What is a shop exclusive? Uh, Funimation has a Funimation Shop. And uh, they they have a special they have, they'll have special releases on there with special stuff on it. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder what 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 uh, little bonuses they've got on that one. Good question. Anyone who has who is in who has an exclusive there, let us know. Uh, moving on, Media Blasters has released Ladies vs. Butlers: The Complete Collection on DVD. This is twelve <laughs> episodes long for thirty nine ninety eight MSRP. Fun show. And Sentai Filmworks, uh, Alchie. Escher and Loggy. I have no idea. <laughs> Alchemist of the Dusk Sky. That's a nice name. Yeah. Complete collection DVD, 12 episodes for $49.98. It's uh, sub only. Okay. And so let's see if there's... Sorry, getting down there. <laughs> uh, it's also being released on Blu-ray mm -hmm. for $59.98. Mm -hmm. And that also is, is sub. And Sentai Works is also... Sentai Filmworks has also got... One Week Friends, complete collection DVD, a 12-episode series for $49.98, and that also is sub, sub only. Mm -hmm. uh, they've released the same thing on Blu-ray for $59.89. And uh, what's TRSI doing? So White Stuff slash Nozomi, uh, Nozomi Entertainment has released... Nozomi. Yes. They've released a Yakitate Japan, a.k.a. the baking anime. The baking anime. Um, Yakitate Japan, a part three. Makes me hungry thinking. Yeah, about it. No kidding. Uh, this is episodes. Oh, I got this wrong. Shoot. Sorry, guys. Um, I need to pull it. It's uh, 17 episodes of Yakitate, Yakitate Japan. I think it's, that would be, I think, 38 to 69 episodes. Can't be. Um, yeah, that's going to be later on. So. 43 to 69, some along those lines. 53, 53. 17 episodes, 53, counting back yeah. from 69. So and, you do the math. Uh, <laughs> that would be uh, uh, 59. 50, uh, it's going to be 50, 53 to 69. It's got to be. Um, something 52, along those lines. 52, 53, maybe. Okay. Yeah, 53. Okay. You, you skip the so, the previous one. Um, okay. So, uh, as I was saying, Right Stuff International slash Zomi Entertainment released Yakitate Japan Part 3, episodes 53 to 69. That's 17 episodes for $44.99. Um, uh, and that's also sub only. Well, let's see what's, what's up with Viz what's Media. Up with Viz. Pokemon, the movie. Hmm. Gratina and the Sky Warrior, hmm. 1997. Yep. That's not the year it was released. That It was released <laughs> th recently this week, uh, dub only. Uh, okay. Near 20 bucks. Yeah, not bad. Um, speaking of that price, I actually went back this week and looked up street price for these series to get a, a, a feel for how much they cost. Um, that Yu-Gi-Oh! Season 2 collection, uh, when you look at the price on Amazon and divide it out, it's about a dollar per episode. Uh, Noragami, Ladies vs. Butlers, and One Week Friends. That's about three bucks an episode for all those releases on DVD. And those are for the standard release, standard editions, obviously. And Yakutate Japan Part 3, it's about two sixty four per episode. Hmm. So prices are still not too bad. Don't get too freaked out by the MSRP out there. Yeah. So that is it for Horizons. Thank you for watching. And we will see you all on the next Horizons next week. Thank you for joining. Bye.